What's up guys? Welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. Today's video is going to be a crop specific video. We're going to be talking about one of the top five selling vegetables at market for us here on our farm. And you've heard me talk about some of these in the past, but the one we sell a lot of early spring and into summer is beets, red beets specifically. Um, we grow several different varieties. We grow red ace, we grow boro, um, but we're going to be talking about red ace today. And I'm going to carry you through the process from start to finish. And I'm going to share with you some of the tricks that I use to get better germination on my beet starts. And we're going to do that right after this. Welcome back guys. It's a dreary, gloomy day here in North Carolina. It's been raining off and on all day. That's why I didn't want to get started on anything outside because I'm just going to get run back in the high tunnel. All right, so um, beets. Beets are one of the top five selling vegetables we have. We sell them in like four to five beets per bunch. And normally our beets don't get no bigger than, you know, just a hair bigger than a golf ball. And I've got some out here that's probably ready to come out. I'll show you that uh, we're going to be harvesting here probably this week when we go back to market we're doing two markets one week three markets the next so every other week we're doing three markets and normally we take anywhere from 10 to 20 bunches of beets per market and you can see some of these guys here that one that guy there that guy there definitely that's about the size that we like to harvest and you can see we've basically been harvesting on this row here and she's been kind of singling them out and picking them but those guys there are ready. And yeah, see this right here? That's a perfect size. So we're fixing to get this row out. Now I got out here the other day, we harvested this row. It's ready to be replanted. So we're gonna do that here after a while. But I'm gonna show you, I've got to start three more trays and I'm gonna show you the process that I use to start beet seed. All right, so believe it or not, starting beet seed for me begins with compost. Um, and I'll explain it to you. These bags here, or paint strainer bags you see you pick these up at Lowe's for you know a couple bucks and you get two of them in a bag but I've got a load of compost on the truck we just made a compost run this morning but what I'm gonna do is take just a couple hands full ain't gotta be much yep smells good so a little bit of compost in that bag right there and what I'm gonna do is come in here and I'm gonna soak this compost in well water make sure when you do this you're using well water and i think a few of you probably know where i'm headed with this but this is well water in this bucket and what i'm gonna do is take this and i'm gonna make a compost tea with it simple compost tea strain the bag pick it up strain 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 and squeeze it out All right, we're done with that. So basically what we've got here is a bucket full of compost tea that we made with organic compost. All right, and here comes the fun part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prime our beet seed. And by priming, I mean we're gonna kickstart the germination process by soaking our beet seeds in this compost tea for 24 hours. And I've got some I've already done here. This I primed early on when I planted this other stuff, but I got a new bag of red ace that we're gonna prime. And I'm gonna show you that process that we're gonna use before we get started on anything else. All right guys, so we got our compost tea in this bucket here. And what I got here is just a little nylon footy uh, stocking. Um, basically gets these things like at Dollar General or whatever, but I keep several of them down here for this purpose. But basically you're just gonna take the seed and it's kind of hard to judge and if you do it enough you'll kind of get a feel for how many you'll use at one time but it really doesn't matter because once you prime them you can actually save them and use them when you need them um you don't have to use them right away but it's important to dry them so they don't rot and that's what i do i spread them out on paper towel let them dry and then i put them back in the freezer to store but yeah 
about that much right there. Then I'm gonna take a piece of twine, this same stuff I use all over the farm, the trellis wood and everything else. And basically just gonna tie it up, just like you see here. And I usually use something to weigh it down so it stays submerged and I usually keep stuff around here. Yeah, there's a big flat washer. And I'm basically gonna take it here and hang it down and I'm gonna drop that in that bucket of compost. handy dandy spring clamps let me tell you we use these for everything and that's it that's it we're gonna leave them seeds in there for 24 hours we're gonna take them out we're gonna spread them out we're gonna let them dry or we're gonna transplant them into a tray all right so remember when I said make sure you use well water don't use chlorinated water because it'll basically you know it'll ruin the process because what you're trying to do is take the good biology that's in the compost that you got and you want to use it in the water to inoculate basically the beet seed so you get the biology started on the embryos and once you put them into the trays usually within two or three days man them things are up all right so we're done with this for today so we're going to set it up here on this top shelf and it's been getting pretty warm in this high tunnel so that and that's fine you know, the warmer it is the better you don't want it boiling but you know hot water's not going to hurt it but right now we're going to get some trays out i'm gonna get some soil in them and we're going to start these guys which have already been primed i primed these back in march and I put them in the refrigerator in there with the rest of my seeds. And I mean, you can see nothing different about them. It's just that they have been sitting on go. They're ready to go in the tray. Once we put them in this soil and we wet it down, basically, boom, it's going to kick that thing in high gear and they're going to take off. All right, guys, so what I've got is 338 cell trays here. I got it full of soil. So I start them in 338s because we do beets on 50 foot beds. And for one 50 foot bed, it takes 400 plants. This is a 338, so what I do is start three trays, and I got two more back here behind me. And that will give me two 50 foot rows of beets. And we plant ours on six inch centers, and then we do sometimes have some left over, but we plant that many because of germination. Now, beets is one of those things that, you know, sometimes you get good germination. I've had them to where I got 100%, and then I've got them to where, you know, um, you get 50%. So it depends on the seed, it depends on the process, but this is something that I've been doing that seems to be helping with the uh, germination. And I'm gonna show you a tray out here in a minute that we're gonna plant today that I use the same method on, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like, the germination rate, when you prime your beet seed. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. It's like everything else. What I've got is, you know, beet seeds in my hand that have been primed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these dudes and I go through here and singly put one seed in each cell. And this is gonna take a little while, and I'm not gonna make y'all go through this whole process with me, but. Once I do, basically I'm just gonna indention, I'm gonna put a little indention in that cell just to hold that seed, not deep. I'm just gonna press it down enough to make it a little divot. And I'm gonna show you, that's what I'm talking about, that little divot right there. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do this whole tray here, get this one out of the way, and then we will move on to getting some beets planted out in the garden. I forgot to mention earlier that even though you plant one seed per cell, don't expect it just to make one plant because beet seed have several embryos in one seed and you will more than likely have to thin your plants before you put them in the ground. At least that's what I do. I don't thin after I plant it. I thin when I'm transplanting. Um, it's just something the way I've always done it. And it seems to work because I hear some people saying that, you know, if you plant all the those starts at one time then you'll have a hard time getting any of them to size up and as i showed you earlier i don't have that problem when i singulate the transplants and put them out they size up just fine and it saves you from having to do that process later on in the field all right guys so we got the first tray done got it watered in it is ready to go in the germination chamber now i do heat my beet seeds um during germination now some people say that you know you germinate them uh, at cooler temperatures which they will they will they will germinate at 50 60 degrees it just takes forever so with this process here the seeds are inoculated they're wet down they're in the soil we're going to put them on a heat mat and we're going to set it at about 75 ish and within a couple days these guys will germinate and once they do i won't leave them in there as soon as we start to see red coming out of there when the tray is 50 percent germinated i'll take it out and i'll put it out here on the rack and just let mother nature do the rest all right guys, so we got these guys here. 
on the heat mat and i'm gonna put the other two in here also but it's set on 80 well it's sitting on 83 degrees um it's set on 80 degrees but the heat mat's off right now but yeah in a couple days those guys will be germinated and we can move them back outside all right so now comes the fun part we're transplanting beets into the garden now i've got a couple trays out here that i've been whittling on i say whittling but you know the um rows that i've got out there this is some that was left over from when i planted these rows and you know we kind of kept them going a little bit alone but you can see these beets here this is what a tray looks like when you get almost 100 percent germination now all of these were primed with the same process you seen me doing there earlier these were primed or same way planted the same way germinated the same way they just been outside a little while i think this was back in march yeah mid-march when i started these guys so yeah these guys are already over 30 days old so they need to go outside but yeah i'm gonna see if i can find one that i was telling you about that needs to be thin so when you pull these guys you will see and see how it's got two two seedlings in there now when i planted it i planted one seed i didn't plant two i planted one seed but you're going to get more than one so i'm gonna sit this thing down let me show you so these two plants here you're gonna take the small one now there's actually three in there and we're gonna take that one out too we're just gonna leave that one that's gonna make one healthy plant and you say man that's a lot of time to do it that way and it is but you can see how they come out like this that's one beet seed that's what you get and what I do is go find the strongest one, which is this one, and I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna pull the rest. And I mean, it takes a little bit of time, but you'll be you'll be happy you did it now versus when they're in the garden trying to grow and you're trying to thin them out. Cause normally then, you know, not even one of them will size up. It's like if you disturb the roots, I mean, you, you done lost a battle, son. I'm gonna go through and find the biggest one and I'm gonna pull the rest. And that's what I'm gonna plant. All right, guys, so we're out here in the garden. I got the row. You see me put the fertilizer down. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through this tray of beets and I'm going to pull out and make sure that I got, you know, good starts that I'm going to go back in the ground with. And I'm going to use the 4x4 four four gritter. You see me use this for onions and things like that. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and set this board down. And I'll go down the whole row and I'll make all the impressions. But we're going to go down through here. And I'm going to give you an idea how I do this. So basically, you can see how the plugs are. And let's see if I can do this with the camera. Pick it up. You see the indentions that it makes. So basically, you'll have to go back and poke it in. And I got a, a little short stick that I do that with. Just poke it just a little bit deeper. Because some of these trays that I use are deeper than others. And you see that? But put it in and make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. You don't want any, you don't want no air space in it. But we're basically going to do that with all of them. And like I said, we're going to double check, make sure we got one plant. And put them in and go around. And you can see the spacing is about six inches apart. And that's another thing with beets. You want good airflow in there. There's not a lot of disease pressure, but you will get leaf spot, especially during the summertime. Now, these behind me that you can see, they look pretty good. You can see some of them got just a tick of it, but most of them, for the most part, they look really good. But during the heat, during the summertime, and especially during the humidity, you'll see them, they'll get a bunch of little dots all over the leaves and it just it, it isn't real nice looking and i read somewhere that you could use boron spray on boron throughout the growing season and it'll help with that so keeping the leaves looking healthy and looking you know appetizing is you know going to be important for us so i'm gonna go down through here and i'm gonna take that board and i'm gonna go all the way down this row here and i'm gonna dimple everything and then i'm gonna come back i'm started out with the two trays that i've already pulled from so I'm going to go ahead and utilize every one of them before I move on to that full tray. And we'll go ahead and get some put in the ground. All right, guys. So we got them in. All 400. Well, it's a little over 400. But all 400 and some change in that one row. And they're six inches apart. We pre use pre-plant fertilizer, which we always do. Uh, garden tone, 344. Four. The ground is plenty moist because it just rained this morning. So we're probably not going to irrigate today, but we definitely will tomorrow. And these guys should jump just like the rest of these beets in these two rows over here. 
these were in put in two weeks ago those were put in about four weeks ago and usually we can go through a row going to markets like we are right now we can go through a row in about three weeks two to three weeks depends on demand um, we just now started ramping up how many that we harvest and take to market um, and we're selling everything we're taking I think I brought back two bunches yesterday out of ten and uh, I think Bessie sold every one she took so um, people as you know the market start picking up we will start selling these things a lot more at a time I mean we'll go 20 30 bunches at a time in the peak of the season we just about full in the tunnel here I gotta clean this row up where the sugar snap peas was and get these plants out of here I'm gonna work on that the rest of this afternoon but you can see the mountain magics I've been trellising them um, you can see this is another form of trellising that we use and you can see all I'm doing is wrapping the plant as it goes up this works really well for cucumbers too that's uh, probably what we're gonna wind up doing over there I don't know these guys may be too big to trellis right now so we may leave them on the ground but the next round we put in we definitely will put on a string you can see our determinant tomatoes over there the BH589s they rocking and got tomatoes all over them some good ones too um, these guys here this is primo red you can see they got tomatoes all over them yeah so it won't be long we'll be having some tomatoes to carry to market so be on the lookout for the next video we will be putting peppers in this high tunnel um, bell peppers to be exact we're gonna go through that road go ahead and get everything cleaned up and then we're gonna remulch this bed and put some Vanguard bell peppers in here um, we're going to be working on the other tunnel. I got some hardware order for it. We're going to be working on that. So guys, that's where I'm going to call a wrap for this one. But if you missed the short that I made when we did the uh, prime beet seed versus the unprime beet seed, I'll put a link to it up here. Go back and watch that one. And if you found anything on this channel useful, anything entertaining, or you just want to know more about our farm, click this subscribe button over here. And as always, we appreciate you stopping by. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.